It's just so amazing what you can do with those four-way buttons. And uh, today I'm I'm gonna show you how 24 buttons on a Rackfly Uno will uh, easily change your <laughs> your life in terms of controlling parameters and whatnot. Um, I think you have never seen anything which is so flexible. So um, instead of just telling you this, maybe I should demonstrate it to you. Um, so uh, just quickly, what is the Rackfly Uno? It's um, this um, one unit panel. It is PoE powered. It's really low form factor, so it sits nicely on a table. It has a little tilt, so it's also uh, nice to operate. And um, it is still a rack unit. So you can put it in your rack or you can put it on your desk. And um, if you put it in a rack, you still have easy access to the plug here on the side and so forth. Now, uh, this would typically be used with um, VSM, Lavo, uh, router panels like video hubs and Kumo routers and I don't know what. And uh, today I have hooked it up with an ATEM switcher. Um, ATEM switches are lovely in many ways. Uh, for one thing, because they are so cool when you demonstrate features like this since they have audio adjustments and uh, sources to route and parameters to adjust and all such things. Now, um, the Rackfly Uno is divided into three, oh, sorry, four sections. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four. It's all RGB color-coded buttons and LED bars and 24 OLED displays. Awesome stuff. Now. What I'm gonna do is to zoom in so you can see these features uh, up close and uh, then I'm gonna demonstrate it to you. The first thing I want you to pay attention to is the shift key. So uh, for the shift key, what I usually do is to make a small graphic that will illustrate what the shift key does because I have a tendency of using the four-way button features on shift keys pretty heavily. So a four-way uh, button is a button that you can press on any side and it will allow you to use those presses in different ways. And uh, that you'll see in this video for sure. Now, the shift key here has two ways. As exposed by the graphic, it will tell you if you press the lower edge, it's a shift key. So you see it's a toggle shift key in this case. I pressed it repeatedly and it seems to do something to these buttons and displays. Basically, it changes what they do. When I press, it goes to index 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, while before it was index 1 to 5. You also see the names. These select content for the Media Player 1. Maybe if you want to establish that fact, I can just go to the Media Player 1 here and you can see how these buttons are basically selecting lower thirds in Media Player 1. But if I have this shift key enabled, then it's going to select uh, some different graphics, which in this case is not lower thirds, but of course they could be. Now, uh, it seems that this bar below the buttons are just following the buttons because they don't have any other significance in this case. So the shift key also means something for all the other sections. So if I press the shift key now, you see likewise, these buttons apparently routing auxiliary 5 will change which input sources are routed to auxiliary 5. So again, I, I route uh, sources on input uh, auxiliary 5. You can see that in the software now. Uh, as I press this button, it's changing. And uh, the, in this case, I use these as tally lamps for the program and preview. So that's uh, basically, if you, if you go here, you can see I, I could make a cut and you'll see those are changing around. Um, why? Well, because I thought it was uh, it would be a good uh, use case of how these tally bars can be used to indicate basically anything. And um, uh, in, in this case, showing what is on, on preview and program might be appropriate or useful. Of course, they should correspond with the actual sources used for the auxiliary 5 bus that we have on the buttons. Okay, so that was this section. Uh, let's go to uh, the section over here. So this whole section is actually 12 buttons adjusting audio sources. Now, that means we should go to the audio tab of the ATEM switcher. So currently my shift key is pressed down. So you see it starts with volume for uh, channel number 13. <clears throat> and if I press it here, you see now it's, it's down to, to one. Okay. So uh, please look at the uh, ATEM software control. You can see as I press the lower edge of the buttons, I'm turning on and off these uh, audio sources. And as I press the side, I'm adjusting the volume. 
So uh, why would you use a C90A anymore? So the C90A is our old um, uh, audio controller and uh, there we had uh, knobs you could turn. We had two buttons for on and off uh, audio follow video and so forth. And what you have here is all that stuff in <clears throat> these four-way buttons with the display even. That's just crazy. And so, so, so flexible. It's it's really amazing. Now, um, uh, you may want to uh, see the, the VU metering. And if we go back to the shift key, you can see on the shift key that if you press on the upper edge, it's going to toggle between on and VU. And then it says audio. So what I meant to say here is if I press this edge, I'm actually changing these labels over here. So they are showing VU metering. And you can see now, uh, I could turn down the volume. So if I turn down the volume, you'll also see how the VU meter is being more moderate. And you can see in the software that it really does correspond <coughs> with the audio levels. So if I turn it all the way down, it disappears. And then I turn it up and you can see, okay, so it's green. Now it's red. And I think we can make it peak as well if we want. Yes, we can. Now, um, so VU metering is essentially displayed for all these channels now. If I press the key on the upper edge again, I go back to showing whether the audio sources is turned on or off or not. And it goes on over here. Um, nothing much to say there. If I press here, you see we have for, for Media Player 1 and Media Player 2 for the XLR and the RCA inputs. Okay, I think that's, that's all there was to say. Uh, but I just think it's so fascinating and amazing how many things you can put into this. And it's nicely color-coded, colors that I put in myself. So I basically just said, okay, in this section dealing with audio, I want to use a purple color because I like that for audio. And in the other sections, I use a different color to indicate the, uh, the control type that I use. And that's why you want RGB colors in your panels to easily group things to make it easy to operate for the users. Because that's what it's after all about. Easy operation, not making mistakes, making things simpler and um, failure proof when you do live production. <laughs>